Today, I'll be walking you through my exact color grading workflow for D-Log M inside of Premiere Pro. We'll be taking our clip today from looking like this to looking a little something like this. So if you're currently shooting in D-Log M on your drone or on your Osmo devices, then this is the video for you. And without further ado, let's dive in to Premiere Pro. All right, so here we are inside of the color tab in Premiere Pro, and this is where we're gonna be kicking off everything. So the first thing I wanna do is make my way over to our basic correction tab, and I'm also gonna make sure that my clip can see as much of everything as possible. See, if we are only color grading here, I can't see much of the sky, versus if we're color grading here, I can't see much of the city below us. So getting to a nice sort of middle point about here where I can see plenty of the sky and still plenty of the city below us, make sure that we get a nice even grade over our shot and that we're not just isolating one part of our image. So the first thing we wanna do is convert our clip from D-Log M into either Rec. 709 or a custom format of Rec. 709. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna open up the input LUT section right here and I'm gonna make my way down to my custom WhatsApp D log M conversion LUT. We're just gonna click that and apply it. And just like that, we've taken our, that sort of flat vibe off our shot. We've added a load of contrast back in and a load of color into our image as well. And almost this shot is looking next to usable. I find that using conversion LUTs when I'm color grading saves me an infinite amount of time and headache. So being able to just click on my custom conversion LUT makes things so much quicker. Anyway, from here, we have now got a really good base to start our color grading workflow from. However, things aren't dialed in just yet. I'm gonna make my way over to the Lumetri Scopes tab in the top left-hand corner here. Once again, if you can't see that, make your way over to Window and then make sure Lumetri Scopes is enabled. When you open up Lumetri Scopes, chances are, once again, things might look a little bit different. So all you wanna do is right-click on a gray area and then make sure you have Vector Scope and Waveform enabled. We're really only gonna be using the waveform for this shot. I find myself only using the Vector Scope a lot when I have a person in my image and I'm trying to nail the skin tones. So actually for now, Let's just use our waveform. Now what the waveform shows us here is an overall representation of the colors and our exposure in the shot. I'm only gonna be using the waveform to make sure that our exposure is completely dialed in. And as you can see here, we've definitely got more information, more data in the bottom half of our waveform than we do at the top half. Now this is fine for this shot, as like I said before, it was a moody sunrise kind of time. So we don't really have very bright, bright areas, but we do definitely have dark, dark areas. I like that moody feeling. I definitely think it fits this shot almost perfectly. However, what I wanna do is just slightly increase the highlights a little bit to add a touch more contrast. That's it, we've just increased the highlights by 18 more or less, and we are now done. Now let's get into the fun part. So I'm gonna close up the basic correction tab here. I'm gonna skip over the creative tab because this is just where I would input one of my grading LUTs and then be done with it. For example, if we just open this up here and I clicked on, well, it'd be rude not to choose Moody, right? Moody. We're pretty much done. I'm ready to export, we are good to go. But that wouldn't be showing you anything and we've already used a LUT in this video. So I'm gonna take off the Moody LUT and we're gonna make our way into the curve section. Here, we're not gonna have too much of a heavy workflow. I'm simply gonna add a slight S curve to once again add just a little bit more contrast into our shot. You saw there, the moves that I made on the curve were super subtle. One of the big differences between D log M and D log itself is that you don't have as much flexibility to play with. So really big moves, for example, on the tone curve tool is just gonna more or less completely ruin your shot. For example, if I just crank this down like this, yeah, far from ideal. So I'm gonna undo that real quick. And then the last change I wanna make to the tone curve is I'm just gonna lift the blacks up a little bit to fade out more of the dark parts in the image. I'm a real big fan of this look. And if you've watched any of my color grading or Lightroom videos before, you'll know I absolutely love it. So anyway, moving on down into the color side of things, one of the things that I instantly noticed about this shot, I'm not sure what it is, but we've got a load of yellow, I don't know, balconies maybe in <laughs> on this building. So what I wanna do is I want to desaturate those balconies. So I'm gonna add a little point over, well, I'm gonna add two points over the yellow color right here, and then I'm just gonna drag down the saturation. And you can see almost instantly that removes that really intense yellow hit 
And uh, if we just enable that again, if I went the other way, now those yellow balconies, if you will, are popping even more. So let's just reduce those a touch. They now blend into the cityscape a little bit more. And our main point of focus, which is the main building in the middle of our shot, is now standing out just a touch more, which is ideal. I'm more or less gonna skip over the rest of the curves tab. I don't particularly need to play around with all that much. I find that D-Log M is a pretty good base to start with. And if you have a really good conversion LUT, you can color grade your footage more or less instantly, which is super handy. So let's close up our curves tab and then make our way into our color wheels and match. This is where we're gonna be pushing and pulling different colors into different parts of our shot. The first thing I wanna do is really lean in to that blue moody vibe. So let's add a little touch of blue into the shadows. I don't wanna to go too crazy here. What I find myself doing is adding a load of blue and then, or adding a load of any color, and then just slightly backing it off ever so slightly. I'm gonna leave the mid-tones as is. We've got a handful of warm tones that aren't too bright or aren't too dark, but definitely up here in the sky, I wanna make sure that is also blue. So I'm gonna come over to the highlights here and then I'm just gonna drag a little bit of blue in there. And if we quickly turn this off and back on, you can see it gives it an overall moodier vibe, an overall bluer feeling, and that's really the look I'm going for here. I hope that you're starting to see that even small little adjustments really start to add up to something big in the long run. Now, one of the last tools I wanna to use here is the vignette tool. I'm gonna to open this up right here and just simply reduce the amount by probably minus 0.1, just to clean up the sides of our shot ever so slightly. And now we have our complete base grade ready to go. A quick before and after, you can see that this shot is now looking miles better than where it was when we started. Let's have a look at that again, before and after. We'll let this play through as well. That moody blue city vibe is just perfect for this shot. And I've got to say, I'm happy with where we're at so far. Now I find that D Log M doesn't need too much work done to it. So we're not going to have too much more else to do. But the one other thing that I do want to do is open up our effects controls here. So we can see where our Lumetri color effect is right here. By the way, you can also turn it off and on there. And then I'm going to come back over to the Lumetri color tab on the right hand side, and then add another Lumetri color effect. Now, as you can see over on the left hand side, back in the effect controls tab, you can see we've now got two Lumetri color effects. One is our grade and one at the moment is absolutely nothing. And that's because we're yet to touch it. What I wanna do here is I'm gonna add a mask to this shot and this allows me to simply edit only, well, color grade, only one part of the image. And what I wanna do is I just wanna add a little bit of a mask over the brightest part of the sky. So if we just get it, well, if we just dial this in a little bit further, you can see that inside this blue circle, we have the brightest part of the sky, even though it's pretty hard to tell, it was a very gloomy day. And now I'm gonna come back over to the uh, Lumetri color effect here. Where we've got our mask, I'm going to increase the feather quite significantly, and I'm also going to increase mask expansion. This just helps soften out those edges. If we didn't expand our mask, and if we didn't add a feather to our mask, then we just get a really harsh line uh, where we wanted to make our changes, and that would not look good at all. Now, all I'm gonna do is come over to the basic correction here and increase the highlights just a little bit to add a little bit more depth to this shot. I can now click off, and as you can see, I might need to expand this a little bit more over to this part of the shot too. I don't wanna make things too isolated. Adjust that rotation a touch, just like that. I would say things are starting to look good. I actually might have to make this just a little bit bigger. Wow, just like that, there we go. Adjust the rotation on it once again. Cool, that's looking good. And if we bring this all the way back to the start, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask the path. So I'm gonna add a keyframe right at the beginning of our clip. I'm gonna click on the mask and then make sure it's covering the sky only. And then we are going to go to the end of our clip and we're going to hit the mask again, or click on the mask again, I should say, and then drag this down to where it was in the beginning. And now that should very nicely track our sky and make sure things aren't randomly moving as our clip is playing back. Anyway guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. There is my full D-Log M color grading workflow from start to finish, and we've been able to take our clip from this to this. I'm pretty happy with the results. Anyway guys, hopefully you've enjoyed. Let me know in the comments down below. And by the way, if you wanna continue learning about photography and videography, you should check out this video that YouTube has suggested you should go and watch. I'll see you over there.